Hi, this is Jenny from American Hydroponics, and here we are in our HCOE greenhouse. Um, you've been here a number of times before. If you've been any of our previous webinars or any of our Facebook lives, or if you've joined us at any seminars that we have coming up, you can see um, so it's a little bit bare as you look around here because because this greenhouse is operated by the Humboldt County Office of Education. During the summertime, they kind of slowed it down a little bit so that they can thoroughly clean everything. But we still have plenty of stuff growing so you can see what we're doing. Well, today we're going to be talking about how to get 26 harvests in a year. And just so we're very clear as to how we're going to do this, we're comparing hydroponically grown produce versus soil grown or field grown produce. And um, for this example, we're going to use something like a butter head of lettuce. It's the most commonly grown one, something if you're familiar with varieties like a Rex or a Charles, something that gets to be about eight inches in diameter, somewhere around six ounces for a whole head of lettuce. That's something that you would buy in a grocery store, for example. Um, so we're going to be comparing that product or, or for example, a, um, a bunch of basil also, the same sort of growing cycle. So we're going to be comparing that, and again, so we're super clear, what we're going to do is we're going to compare them as if both of these two things were grown in a controlled environment agriculture, something called CEA. And so um, what we're going to do, I'm going to be writing up here on the board. You're not going to have any kind of uh, uh, slides or anything. However, when you get the replay of the, of the webinar, you'll have a few slides on there that will, um, again, have some of these numbers here. But I just thought it would be cleaner and easier if we could go straight on the whiteboard right here in the greenhouse so you could see what we're doing. So again, um, to set the stage for this so we can really compare Lettuce to lettuce, for example, we're going to be talking about growing in a controlled environment agriculture, what we call CEA. So as you're doing your research and you hear something called indoor ag or CEA or controlled environment agriculture, what that means is something that's grown in a greenhouse like this or in uh, maybe it's a grown in a warehouse, but it's something where all of the aspects of grown, growing are accounted for and kept as constant and stable as possible. So we're just going to review real quick. There are five key elements to growing anything. And uh, it doesn't matter what you're growing, whether you're growing um, cannabis or you're growing herbs, like a culinary herb or lettuce or flowers, anything else, you need to consider five key things. And those key things over here, you always need to consider what your pH is. That's critical. You need to consider the humidity. You need to consider your temperature. You need to consider your nutrients that you're feeding them and your light. Something like this greenhouse or control in a controlled environment, you are controlling all of those things. So in our scenario here, instead of just saying, um, for example, grow, growing in a field outside somewhere, we're not going to do that. We're going to say as if all of the conditions were identical between the hydroponic produce or the hydroponic growing and the soil growing. So we're controlling everything. So inside a greenhouse like this, you might have rows of dirt. So that's what that's how we're going to keep everything constant and show you what the difference is here. So, for example, if we're again, if we're talking something like a butter head of lettuce, it takes 42 days <laughs> for a butter head of lettuce hydroponically grown to grow from seed when you first put the seed in to a harvestable head of lettuce. And again, this harvestable head of lettuce is something that's, for example, about eight inches in diameter and um, maybe about six ounces, something like that. It's something that you would buy in a grocery store. That's what we're talking about. In soil, if you're looking at in soil, it takes anywhere from, from 45 to 55 days to grow that same exact head of lettuce to a marketable condition. So um, instead of using a range for our example right here, we're going to take 49 days, just kind of a middle of the road, so we can do our comparisons equally here. So in hydroponics, we know it takes 42 days. In soil, we're going to say it takes 49 days to grow a head of lettuce. Um, 
So first of all, we'll back up just a little bit and we we'll say, why is it even important? Why, why are we even bothering with this? Because we know that every harvest equals revenue or money for all of our growers. So the more harvest you can get in that same amount of time, the more revenue that our growers are putting into their pockets, into their business, able to expand and improve their business. So that's why growing, uh, that's why talking about 26 harvests a year is, is pretty critical. Um, okay, so as we go back to our hydro and our soil, so this 42 days is six weeks, right? It's six weeks. And this 49 days is seven weeks. So you look at it and you say, well, there's only a week difference between the two. So six weeks in the 52 weeks in a year, you're going to be able to get 26 harvests. And I'm going to show you how to do that, how we do that in just a second. Seven weeks in that same time frame, you're going to get just over seven harvests. Um, 20, whoops, 26 harvests. You're going to get just over seven harvests in that same time frame. So with hydroponic, you're going to get 26 growing at 42 days. Soil, you're going to get seven harvests at um, 49 days. So how do we do this? So I'm going to erase this part for a second so I can draw, uh, well, draw up a few diagrams. Maybe I'm not. Um, so let's just say, so first of all, let's let's identify a few things. To grow a head of lettuce, you're going to need about eight inches of space. Both so doesn't matter. That's what you know. These plants are essentially the same. We're not doing a different variety or anything. Or maybe you're growing a romaine, which is tall and skinny, and it only needs four inches. Now we're growing exactly the same variety here. Maybe we're growing a Rex or a Charles or something like that. Um, you need eight ounces for that head of lettuce to really grow to a marketable height, a marketable um, size. So you need eight inches. So in soil, what's gonna happen, I'm just gonna kind of draw a little diagram here. Um, what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have inside, this is your greenhouse footprint, for example, and inside you're gonna plant your um, seeds eight inches apart. You're gonna plant them, you've all probably seen the little mounds of dirt. And you're going to go through and you're going to plant your seeds eight inches apart. And that's going to allow your lettuce to grow to that full eight inches. And then you're going to plant it again eight inches over here. You're going to plant your, seed, your seeds eight inches and so on and so on and so on. So in our example, what we're going to talk about here just to make it super easy is we're going to talk about we're looking for a thousand harvestable heads per planting for either one. A thousand harvestable heads. And so you're going to plant your thousand harvestable heads in this field. To do that, you're going to need, um, at planting them at eight inch intervals, you're going to need on this one about a 30 foot by 160 foot greenhouse to be able to plant your thousand seeds here. Um, over here hydroponically, we're going to show you, you're going to need about a 30 foot, uh, sorry, about a 12 foot by 40 foot space in your system here. So you can see right then and there, um, this is going to come out to about, what's that, about 480 square feet. And over here, this is going to come out to about 4,800 square feet. So sometimes you might hear hydroponic people talking about saying, well, I can grow you know, 10 times the amount of, of um, produce in the same footprint. Well, this is what they're talking about right here, is in the hydroponically in this 12 foot by 40 foot footprint, you'll be able to harvest a thousand plants every uh, 26 times a year. Here to harvest a thousand plants in soil, 
you're going to need 4,800 square feet. So let's start talking about how you really do that. So here's how it works. Now this, I really am going to erase this stuff now. Um, here's how it works. Um, so it's super simple and super obvious. Day one, you're going to plant a thousand seeds in your soil. You're going to carefully plant all those seeds in that space we said. You're going to water them. You're going to feed them the right nutrients. You're going to make sure the pH, humidity, and everything is all in line with ideal growing conditions. And you're going to let that grow for 49 days. And on day 49, you're going to harvest that, and you're going to harvest a thousand plants. So then let's keep going here and say, so on day 50, you're going to, you're going to plant another thousand plants, and you're going to harvest a thousand plants 49 days later, and so on and so forth for a year. And let me just fill this out real quick. Um, 49. One, 50. Let me just do this so we can make it really visual for everyone. So, you're going to harvest over here. You're planting and harvesting. So, Every 49 days, you're going to plant and harvest a thousand plants. That's going to get you a total in the year of 700 plants. 7, uh, sorry, 7,000 plants um, by by your hundred by your harvesting and letting them grow 49 days to a marketable size. Now, hydroponically, this is what we're going to do on day one days. One through seven, let me just show you, for example, we're going to plant a thousand plants into Oasis Cubes. Grab me an Oasis Cube. We're gonna, and I'm gonna show you, if you've been in any of our um, seminars, our Facebook Lives, our, our webinars, you um, are familiar with these Oasis Cubes, but if you haven't, I'm gonna show you what they look like here. These are Oasis Cubes right here. And these are what we plant our plants on and they go all the way through harvest in this exact cube. So you can see right here, this is 144 plants right here in this little 12 by 12 inch oasis right here. Um, so let me just let me just go back over here to our example. So in the first week, you're going to plant 500 plants. And you're going to plant them and those 500 plants will fit perfectly inside of this is a standard um, tray. These are our propagation trays. This right here will fit 576 actual oasis cubes and plants. So you're gonna plant your thousand plants and fill up this tray. So you can see right here, first of all, when we're talking about planting a thousand plants, your first planting of them is gonna fit inside this little 10 by 40 inch tray as opposed to fitting into the soil where you have to plant them when they're going to harvest. So what we have right over here is we have some people who are actually um, doing all of this that we're going to cut to them so you can see what the what the planting and transplanting process looks like. But So your first week, on day one, you're going to plant 500 plants. On day eight, which is the second week, you're going to plant another 500 plants. So what we've done is we've staggered our thousand so we can actually harvest half of the amount every single week. So we're still getting 26 full harvests every year, but we're harvesting them half at a time. So we're harvesting them every single week, but we're only harvesting 500 every single week. So we're getting, we're harvesting a thousand every other week. So how this works is in your nursery channel, on week one, or I'm sorry, in your propagation channel on week one, you're going to fill one hole of these trays with 500 cubes. You can see that small space. 
Week two, you're going to take another tray and you're going to fill it with another 500 on week two. So the plants stay in here and if you look over here, you can see this is what they actually look like. This is uh, about 570 plants right here growing. So this is week one, this is week two. At the start of week three, um, at the start of week three, you're going to take these plants and you're going to transplant them now to something like this, which we call our nursery channel. And you can see all the holes, how close together they are. Um, and we do that because you can see if the plants are starting to grow right here, you can see that they're starting to grow. You're starting to see some greenery come out of them. And uh, you should start to see, let me see if I can pick some up here. The, they're being watered right now. But you should start to see, you can see some roots coming out of the bottom down there. So you know that it's time after um, two weeks in tray one, it's time to transplant those, which is what our, we, as I said, this is a working greenhouse, so they're actually doing the transplanting right now. And you can see how quickly it goes. As they're taking, you're just taking these cubes. This is basil, for example. And you can see the little roots are just starting to peek through right there. You can see how green it is. So you can see the roots are just starting to poke through. And they're just taking the basil. They're breaking apart the oasis cubes. They're already perfectly stored for that. And they're transplanting them in our nursery um, channel. And then they're going to stay. So here at week 16, I'm um, sorry, day 16, um, okay, so you're going to, so you're going to take these out of each one of here and you're going to now transplant, this goes in our crop, the first, um, they spend two weeks, two weeks in our propagation. And then you're going to take them and you're going to do just what our um, workers over here are doing, our growers, and they're transplanting those 500 plants into nursery, into a nursery channel. And again, the nursery channel, you can look right here, we're going to do this in just a minute too. You can see how they're all grown so close together like this. So they're going to go now. Week three. Week three, they're gonna, you're going to transplant the other one. But because after you take all of them out of the propagation tray, you've got an empty propagation tray, so you're going to just repeat the process all over again, and you're going to put another 500 cubes in the propagation tray right here. Um, so you constantly have a constantly rotating system of plants. So these propagation trays are always in use. So even after you transplant, you immediately put more oasis in here. You put more seeds in here. So you have the plants constantly growing in each tray. So they're going to spend two weeks in propagation. And then over here in the nursery panel that you see the guys doing, they're going to spend two weeks growing in that nursery. And then from there, they're going to come over here and they're going to grow. We're going to transplant them from the nursery into the finishing because if we go back to if you remember that what i had up there before the plants need about eight inches of space to grow to a mature marketable plant so you can see as they're coming out of here even these are, are pretty old especially this time of year they grow really fast um but you can see there's already roots at the bottom right here and so all you're doing is you're picking this up and you're transplanting it into um, our finishing channel that, that allows them, this happens to be, we've got dill growing here, we've got cilantro growing here, we've got some parsley growing down here. Um, so, but you can see the, the benefit of what we're doing hydroponically is that you have the ability to pick up and move these plants. So while the plants are still really, really small, really, really young, when you just seed it up, they don't need eight inches of space. They need one inch of space to grow. But And then as they grow, they need more and more space as they grow. So we, we start them over here in the propagation trays. We move them to the nursery trays. 
and then we move them to the finishing trays. So for every propagation tray that has over 500 plants, but again, we're talking a round number of 1,000, you're going to need seven nursery channels. And that's, that's what these guys are over here. You're going to need seven of them. So every one of these trays equals seven of these. Then once you get to the point of where they're going to spend two weeks in the propagation, they're going to spend two weeks in the nursery, then you're going to transplant them to these finishing where you can see these holes are about eight inches apart, center to center. That allows the plant to grow to a full marketable size. And they're going to spend two weeks in the nursery, and then they're going to spend their final two weeks growing here in the, in the finishing trays to grow to a full marketable size. So you're going to go from one tray to seven nursery channel up to 28 finishing channel. And it's going to give them incrementally more and more space as they go. So again, let, let's keep talking here. Um, and then we're going to go 30 to 37. Let me just do fill out this a cup a little quickly here so you can see what I'm doing. So, so they're going to spend nursery and then this is what we call finishing. Um, so as soon as you move these 500 out of propagation and into nursery, you're going to refill them in propagation here. So you're constantly going to be, every time you transplant and they spend two weeks nursery, two weeks propagation, two weeks nursery, two weeks finishing, every time you transplant them, you're going to refill that same spot um, so that when you come down here today, let's see, I, I got off on my, on my, oh, so this should be zero to six. Sorry, I got off on my zero to six, right? Just go by week. Yeah, so this is week one, right? If we're looking at week, this is week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. At the end of week six, you're harvesting 500 of your plant. At the end of week seven, you're harvesting 500 plants and so on because every single week you're, you're seeding and planting 500 more each time. So how this works is basically you're harvesting 500 plants every single week. So if we go 500, times 26, uh, sorry, every week times 52, you're going to get 26,000 plants. Oops, not at all the time. You're going to get 26,000 plants if you're harvesting 500 every week for 52 weeks. So essentially, you're, you're seeding half your system every week, you're harvesting half your system every week, but nonetheless, you're still getting 26 harvests of your full thousand plants every single week. So, um, so, so that's how you get 26 harvests. And you can obviously say, well, kind of, okay, that's all, all well and great. But there's a lot of labor involved. And as you saw them doing the, the um, transplanting, there's a lot of labor involved in that. And that's true. There's also a lot of labor involved in soil when you're weeding and when you're, uh, you're taking care of the pests, when you're fertilizing, when you're doing all of that. Farming is a lot of work. Doesn't matter how you do it. Farming is a lot of work. And you might see some, you know, if you're doing any research on hydroponics, you might see um, someone like container farms, for example. They're super popular right now. And people say, well, you have a little webcam in there and you can just sit back in, in your living room and watch your plants grow. It, it's just not realistic. Farming is they're living, breathing organisms. Things happen. You want to be in there. You want to be looking at your plants every single day. As we walk through there, we might see, you know, there's a little bug or something that's just starting. And as soon as you see bug or pest or disease, anything like that, you want to get on it right away. And those things you can't see through a webcam. So regardless of whether hydroponic or soil farming, it's just a lot of work. 
you you need to get in there and you need to be involved in it and see it. Um, the the difference is you're doing once a week for something like five thousand plants. You might be transplanting here, whereas you might be actually weeding, for example, if you're soil growing, um, growing in soil, something like that. Okay. So let's go back to our scenario here where at the end of 52 weeks, when, you, when you've been growing, you have 26 plants. 26,000. Uh, 26,000 plants hydroponically. You have 7,000 plants in soil. And what's that difference look like? Well, we always tell our customers, you can get about $1.50 per plant at a wholesale price. And that's pretty standard across the country. We have some growers who are getting more than that. Some growers are getting $1.65, some growers are getting $1.95, and that's wholesale. But we're just gonna use $1.50. So if you do this and you say, um, so you've got 7,000 plants, and you're getting $1.50 per plant, you're gonna come up with, sorry, let me go down here, you're gonna come up with, $10,500 as your revenue for, for your year's worth of work in growing in soil. If you're coming over here, if we take our 26,000 plants, use the same dollar fifty. because remember, we're growing them in a controlled environment, so the stability in the environment is the same for both of them. Um, you're going to get about $39,000 for that same exact time frame when you grow hydroponically. Um, same, same, same. Again, if we're trying to keep everything equal here for real um, lettuce to lettuce comparison, grown in the same environment, all of the same critical key conditions are taken into account just by the fact that you can pick up a hydroponic plant and you can transplant it can produce almost three times as much revenue for our, our growers. We are really focused on helping our growers become as productive as possible because productivity means revenue and money in the pocket of our growers. There's no other way around it. Um, so the more you can produce, the more you have to take to market and sell. And that's really what we're all about is helping our growers do that. So what it all essentially comes down to, it's a key use of real estate, right? Every square foot in this greenhouse, it has a price attached to it, has a cost attached to it. So what we're saying is use up the smallest footprint possible when the plants are tiny and they don't need a lot of space. Now, as they grow, they need more space. So then we take them and we give them a little more space over here. We give them a little more space to grow in where they can grow and mature. And then finally, back over here, where again, they need to grow to maturity. Now, in two weeks' time, if we came back here and took a look at these, these would be some of these big, huge, beautiful plants growing. These aren't, these aren't even two weeks in a... Uh, finishing channel, and you can see. Let me ask, I'm just going to take one of these guys out so you can see what the root system looks like. So, this is what a root system looks like, and these have not even been in their two weeks. They're just about two or three days shy of two weeks in the finishing system, and you can see they go from this. Not, I know they're not the same plan, but you can just kind of see they go from small like this two weeks later to a marketable size of a plant. So I'm going to throw this back in here. So. so that's how you get 26 harvests in a year. It's really the use of real estate. When they're small, they don't need that extra space. Put them as close together as possible. They still need the air movement for transpiration and all of that. But when they don't need the space, don't spread them all out. Then as they need the space, give them a little more space for that air movement. And then again, for your final project, um, keep them moving. So that's how you get 26 harvests per year. I think we have a question. Uh, Benjamin asks, what kind of loss do you see from propagation to nursery, nursery to finishing? Well, take a look. Um, what we always recommend, and I'll, I'll tell you, these trays actually hold 576 cubes. 
we always recommend, especially for a beginning grower, to overplant by 10%. So um, for a, an experienced grower, we say overplant by 5% at the most. But to be honest, our loss, if you take a look here, you can see the loss here in this. I'm just going to guess that this is about 150 cubes right here. And there's one that hasn't germinated. So you can see the loss is pretty minimal. And the more skilled you get as a grower, the less loss you will have. That's why we say for beginning growers, overplant by about 10%. For um, pretty, you know, growers that have been at it a little bit, overplant by 5%. But again, these trays hold 576 cubes. So there's plenty of room to overplant on them. And then you get almost no loss from nursery to finishing, because by that plant, you can see here, look at, look at all these um, basil. You can see how, um, you know, how healthy and how consistent uh, they all are. And that's really the key to hydroponic growing is not just the productivity, but the consistency of the produce, because that's what you'll take to market. So that's, um, that's about it for the the webinar we have a couple of we have a special offer for you um you'll get this all in the webinar will be emailed out to you and there'll be slides and stuff but if you'd like to purchase any hydroponic books one of the greatest ways to learn really and to have a reference point is through hydroponic books and you'll get a, a code that you can put in you go to our online shop i think it's called 26 harvest is the code and that'll allow you um up through the end of the month to get 15% off the books. Uh, we also have um, our webinar, our seminar coming up. Unfortunately, it's full. Um, for anybody else that kind of wanted to join it, our webinar is full. It's coming up in two weeks, but that'll be a lot of fun. We have a Facebook Live every Thursday at 3 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time. It's a Facebook Live. Just go on our Facebook. You can go watch it. It's usually anywhere from about a three to five or six minute little video about tips, tricks of the trade, maybe showing you some kind of tool or something we use in the greenhouse. It's super great to get some information. And finally, our next webinar, we, all, we host a free webinar. Um, anybody is welcome to join. Our next one is on August 17th. And we're going to be talking about these right here. These are the anhydro propagation systems. And that's what we talked about. They're not just for propagating seeds. You can uh, grow seedlings in these, and maybe you want to sell seedlings to a local gardening center. You can grow microgreens, which is a high-value crop. You can grow fodder in them. You can see, see in the background back there, you can see your vine crops in these. So uh, the, the propagation systems are super versatile. They're a complete standalone system, that, so you don't have to get them with part of a whole big system. But that's what our webinar is going to be on next um, the next month. It's August 17th and uh, at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So we hope to see you there. Sign up for it, and we'll look forward to seeing you. Thanks.